Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Almock. I'm an artist. I work in all sorts of mediums, making all sorts of projects. And my calling in my life is to teach you how to do that as well. Whatever level of art you're at, whatever medium you love to use, you are welcome here. If you have specific things you want to learn, tell me in a comment and maybe it'll be included in a future video because I would love to help you. I am in the midst of kind of a, a Celtic Irish series because at the time this is being filmed, we are almost at St. Patrick's Day. In my previous video, I just want to reiterate to you in case you missed it, I showed you how to make a Celtic Trinity knot. And my geometry teacher from high school would be so pleased with me for figuring out the math of it. And it's super easy math, I swear. If you can measure four inches, two inches, and one inch, and use a compass, like just a little spinny compass, you can do this project. So there's a link to the video in the doobly-doo, as well as a link to the free PDF, where you can download the math and not even have to think about it. How easy is that? All right, that was my last video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about dew drops on clover. And I'm gonna do it in two projects. The first one is a single clover sitting on a table that has some dew drops on it. This is part of the Green Thumb Watercolor class, which is a class that's only a few bucks on my website. And I keep adding to it periodically when I do one of these very simple plant paintings. If you wanna go get the full video there, then use the link in the doobly-doo, but I'm gonna show you a shortened version of it here. The other project I'm gonna show you is a little on the crazy side. My $10 and up patrons get a bonus watercolor video every month, and there's a couple of them already in there, so if you wanna become a $10 patron and see the series, then you can log in over there for just 10 bucks a month. Super easy to support me and my work and get yourself some education while you do. So let's get started on doing these clover watercolor paintings with dew drops on them. Shall we begin? The first of the clover that I'm gonna show you is from the Green Thumb Watercolor Sketches class. And this one is an inexpensive class. It's level two, a bunch of different types of plants. I add to the class periodically, so you just keep getting more content. You just go log in and this lesson will be there along with the sketch, the colors and everything. But I'm gonna do a quick version of it here for you. If you just need a quick St. Patrick's Day card, this might work. To draw a clover, just make hearts and connect them at the center. They don't have a really skinny bottom to them, so they don't get really long, and they don't have a really deep divot in them either. I've drawn in some water droplets for mine, and if you wanna just try this and not go take the class, then I would recommend just picking one of the water droplets that you like and just painting it with that one water droplet and not trying all of them because all of them can be kind of confusing all at once. So I've used a more traditional kind of green for the main color and just a very light wash of it. I made one of the petals a little on the lighter green side as if there's light cascading on it from the back side, so it's glowing a bit, and then reverted back to the darker green color for the rest. Now notice that I've painted right through some of those water droplets. It's because water is see-through and you'll see the color underneath through it. And in some cases, the, the light that hits it is going to make it glow more. So these drops on this side, I wanted the light to really hit them. And I used more of a yellow-green color in there. But I'm painting it while it's wet so that I get some blending of those colors. We don't really want the water droplets to look like stickers. So it's helpful to try to join them color-wise with each other. But you could pick one of these droplets out and try painting this with with that kind of particular droplet. You can also make your clover flat instead of looking like it's on a table, dimensional, that's fine too. Now, as I said, my petal on the left side is sticking up in the air. So these others are gonna be darker petals. And I'm gonna just kind of deepen them and darken them a little bit more and more, just trying to feel through how dark I want them to be as I as I'm painting through it. I'm I'm a layerer. I guess that's, is a layerer a word? 
I like to layer. I like to adjust colors as I go because I'm terrible at making decisions on the fly and getting it right the first time. So here I've finished painting the leaf, these bottom two leaves, and I put a shadow on the shadow side of the droplets because droplets, if they're dimensional, if they're like really thick droplets, they're going to cast a shadow onto whatever's underneath of them. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a shadow under them. And in the class, I'll talk about how to carve out those shapes, that sort of thing. But you can make them much simpler than that. A water droplet can have a highlight on the side where the light's hitting it. It can have a highlight on the back side because the light goes through the drop and then catches and expands on the back side of the drop. That's why sometimes they look like they're kind of glowing. But there's other drops that look like they're almost completely see-through. You can barely tell that they're there. And whatever kind of droplet you make, that's basically going to be okay because every droplet can look any old way. Now here I'm just trying to add a little bit more of the color into the droplet before then going in with a really dark color to make this petal also as dark as the other two. The nice thing about doing clover is you can do one leaf, one petal at a time instead of doing the whole plant at the same time. It's one of the things that I like about plants that are so simple that you can divide them into that with, without having to stress out about trying to paint the whole thing all at once. So that's nice. Now this top leaf, I want to have a little bit of shadow at the top corner and then have it go down to the center where it's going to have that glow. So I started with a darker and thicker pigment up at the top and then kind of added in a little bit more yellow to blend that and let it get lighter and lighter toward the center of the, uh, the plant itself or in, in the center of the clover. And just kind of slowly working on it, taking some water and letting that color blend very gently. You can add a little bit more dark color at the top to increase the contrast because now that petal doesn't feel like it belongs to the rest of the clover. I wanted to darken it so it's all still wet and I can add that color in and it's going to get a really nice soft transition from the top all the way down to the bottom. You can see each one of these drops has a totally different highlight to it. They have totally different approaches to where the light is hitting each one of them because that's how science is. Light, light hits all these drops and bounces around in different ways. If you want to find a reference and, and find an, an exact droplet, then go for it. But if you're doing like a St. Patrick's Day card, <laughs> this would be totally perfect. Everybody would think you're amazing if you just put one droplet on it, much less trying to do a bunch of them. So a still picture of this will be on my blog if you just want to, you know, look at that and copy it and make it for yourself. Or you can sign up for the watercolor class. And that one is, like I said, just a couple of bucks and you get a whole bunch of different plants in it. So it'll be really helpful, I think, in learning to watercolor, especially in greens. This second painting is going to use a totally different way of handling the drops and it is kind of the opposite of what I tried to do in the single clover. The single one had nice big drops. I could really see them. I could focus on them. In a painting like this, I had to keep the whole thing moving and the whole thing wet all at once. And as I was trying to do that and think through how I was going to teach this to the patrons who were going to watch it, because this was created for my $10 and up patrons who get a bonus watercolor video every month, and they'll get a much slower version of this. Um, I, I was just struggling to figure out how to do this other than leaving the drops white at first. Because if I had painted through them the way that I did on the single clover, I probably would have lost my mind trying to find them again. And especially if I was trying to go quickly, because when I try to shoot videos, I try to paint a little faster than normal just so I can actually get it done and and make sense out of it when I'm doing voiceovers for it. But anyway, the drops are all very white and you can see they look like blobs of, I don't know, acrylic paint or something like that on them because they don't have any of that color going through them. They don't have any transparency to them unless it's like transparency to the white of the paper. But I had to add that color later to them. They're going to end up looking more like stickers on top of the surface than they would had I done what I did in the single clover 
and painted right through them. But in that one, it was just such a simple one. I could do that and show you, whereas this would have taken me probably six hours to try to paint it, handling each one of these water droplets in that way. But instead, I ended up adding my shadows to it, then trying to soften the shadows, and then trying to put a little more color into each of the petals or the leaves, I guess, of a clover to try to make them look like they belonged with it. They had the same color shining through. And it was just a whole different type of challenge. But if you'd like to see that, it's over on my Patreon page. $10 and up patrons can view that along with the other ones. I started in January, so this is number three in the series of Patreon videos. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a delight to have you here. I want to give you a heads up on Saturday, this coming weekend. I am going to have the class that you guys said you wanted me to do. I'm going to have it fully edited by the weekend. And it's all about drawing those plants. So if you like drawing plants, then that one might be interesting to you. So come back on Saturday and I'll see you then. Take care. And until then, go create something every day. Bye-bye.